Next, your major obsession or blind spot is connected to the placement of Rahu. Okay. Now, Rahu and Ketu are always opposite. So if Rahu is here, K2 will always be 7 away. To be 7 away means you're directly opposite. It's 180 degrees. So if we count from Rahu, counting inclusively, we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and K2 is there. Okay? If Rahu is here in the ninth house, Caitlin, where will K2 be? Um, in the third yes. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So K2 will be here. There is always this opposite relationship and so on. Okay? Where Rahu sits is your blind spot. You all know the story of Rahu and K2, who they are, why they exist. Okay. Technically speaking, Rahu is the north node of the moon. And the north node of the moon and the south node, when the sun and moon line up with them, an eclipse is caused. These are the mathematical points in the sky that when the sun and moon cross them, an eclipse is generated. Okay, that's the astronomy. The Vedic tale says that at the beginning of the universe, the gods, the bright beings, the devas, and the dark, the titans, conspired together to create, to churn the universe. Out of the churning of this universe, some great things were formed. One of them was a nectar of immortality, which would render anyone who sipped it immortal. Of course, the titan was like, yeah, 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 we want this. And the gods are, yeah, that would be nice, because they're more polite. Um, but of course, if the Titans had got a hold of it, then the universe would just be ripped apart. So Vishnu came out, and he disguised himself as Mohini, the most beautiful female that has ever e existed. And he started dancing. And all the, the Titans, you know, they're like these really... They're like biker dudes, you know? They're like, really? Arr. They saw her and like, ooh. They forgot about the nectar. Of course, they're all male in this, in this story, but I'm sure there were some female titanesses and definitely some female goddesses. But the point is that he distracted the, the, uh, the demons. And while he was distracting them, he said, okay, drink, drink to the gods. And so the gods started drinking. But Rahu... Very clever. He said, oh, I'm not falling for this. Disguised himself as a god. So Rahu rules disguise and illusion, Maya. And got in line with the rest of them. And just as the nectar was being passed around, the, uh, the sun and the moon sort of figured it out. They're like, wait a minute, you're not one of us. And they go, Vishnu, <laughs> help. <laughs> because Rahu is very powerful. He's more powerful than the other Generally, the titans are more powerful. The dark, uh, the, the titans and demons, what they're sometimes called, are more powerful than the gods. That's why the gods are always calling to Vishnu or to, to the feminine divine or to the masculine divine in some form to save them. Because they're pretty bad at fighting. They're good at giving wealth and gifts and, and honors and the good things in life. But if you want power and status, you know, you worship the titans, like Ravana and the Ramayana. Anyway, so the gods are like, Vishnu, Vishnu, help. Vishnu turns around, throws his discus, and cuts Rahu's head off on the spot. But Rahu had had a, a sip, just as a drop had touched his tongue of the nectar. His head gets cut off. Wow. Disappointment, huh? But he was immortal. 
So now Rahu becomes a head and a body. So the head is Rahu, Ketu is the tail. And these demons are pictured as having sort of human-like heads and serpent-like bodies. So Ketu is serpent, and Rahu is his big head, like a dragon, you can say. So Ketu swears, I mean, Rahu swears revenge against the sun and the moon who tattled on him. And he says, I'm going to get you, suckers. I'm going to get you. And he leaves. So as soon, and he, uh, he lies in wait, waits for his moment, and when the time is right, he jumps and he swallows the sun. But because he has no body, the sun passes through. And this is what we call an eclipse. This is the myth of the eclipse. Archaeologists say these are myths. What Joseph Campbell taught us is that myths, what we call myths, have deep, powerful, profound truths. And one of the truths of this myth is that Rahu can help you to achieve things you never imagined you can achieve. For example, a demon becoming immortal. No other titan or demon has ever become that. Rahu did it at a great price. The price was he, he, he got chopped in two. So um, people who run Rahu, who are heavily influenced by Rahu, achieve enormous, can achieve enormous things, but they pay a huge price. So Rahu is associated with sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It is, for example, Charlie Sheen, Rahu in the first house. Rahu in the first house give a big inflated sense of the self, first house. But it's also your blind spot. You really don't see who you, who you really are. 